I mean, the yesterday's what I talked about is not included in the notes. Uh, yesterday, whatever I told you, it is not inside the notes. So I hope the video is clear enough. You can look back and. Uh, and in, uh, and what is in the notes? I think I will not cover the 8.7. I will not cover, uh, which is the few words from physics. I mean, more or less, it is already said in in a slightly different language, right? But I'm, so I'm not going to spend time on that because we have to still do a lot of other things. Huh? Uh, so, and there are a few lectures, only a few lectures left now. But uh, you can take a look at it because this is the thing that I was mentioning to you, this um, Gelman octet, mesons and so on, how you put the mesons uh, as an octet you know, for the SU3. All that 8.7, uh, well, 8. Point, uh, no, actually 8.9, 8 8.9, uh, yeah, 8.9, right, yeah. and onwards, uh, I'm not doing it, although I did some uh, tensor products, right, tensor products uh, I discussed already, but in a different language, it's not the same language, so just the 8.9 I, I have not covered. Huh? Okay, and uh, um, I don't know, is there anything else to say? Okay. It, maybe the best thing is you ask questions, then I can, uh, something uh, which was not completely clear or some doubts about something. Yeah, so maybe today we should just spend time on uh, SU3 uh, and next week go on the generalization. So just ask questions about so far what has been done in SU3. Yeah, Tableau, maybe I can just mention a bit. Uh, yeah, I can mention this. Um, right. There is a way to do it using Yes, yes. Yeah, uh, but okay, so, right. Uh, so let me see where to start with. So, I mean, remember, we talked about the tensors, T, I, J, K, right? And so on. Some tensor where this index, I, J, etc., can take some values. Uh, 1 to N. So, this I, I J, K. Uh, can take some values. I mean, not just, it doesn't have to be just, in fact, I1, I2, Ik, let's say. Huh? This k is arbitrary. You can take kth rank tensor. This will be the kth rank tensor. Right? So this is the kth rank tensor. And in the context of the representation, Lian general representation theory, what we are thinking about is these indices uh, take the value in the fundamental representation of some Lie algebra. So for example, for SU2, this will just go from 1 and 2. No? Because in a fundamental representation is doublet, spin half representation. So there are only two states, right? Uh, if you take SU3, fundamental representation will be three-dimensional. So in that case, this in each of these indices can take values 1, 2, 3, etc. Okay? So then what we did, I mean, we said that, OK, this itself, uh, is not is not irreducible. Okay? The number of components is clear. Uh, if there are, if if we are talking about uh, uh, SU three, let's say each of these indices take uh, values three values, right? So then uh, then the total total number of components will be three to the k, right? Three times three times three etc. So, but this is not a irreducible representation. It is a representation, but it's not a irreducible representation. Why is it a representation? Because we know how the group acts on it, right? Or the Lie algebra acts on it. The Lie algebra will act uh, additively. Each uh, each index it will act on each index, no? So so let's suppose in the uh, in the fundamental representation. Okay. 
the x is, uh, so let's say r of x, x is the arbitrary Lie algebra element. And this is uh, the, this R just means fundamental representation. Although this can be done also for other representations, but let's focus on the fundamental representation. Mm -hmm. So this R X is the so therefore it, it, it will have some index, let's say I J, where I and J each will go from uh, uh, in, that, in the same range as that. Right. So in the case, let's focus on SU three. So this uh, this I I and J go from one up to three. Right. One two or three. Because we are talking about a 3 by 3 matrix. Is it always like this for every i1, i2, i3? Uh, that they are going from 1 to 3? Yeah, yeah everyone. So. Any different kinds of, for example, one in this might be from SU3, one other might be. No, no. Then you, this, it will not be, I mean, you cannot talk about any symmetrization of that. Because all these tricks that we are using is to take this, uh, the same uh, group, same, the same uh, Lie algebra, and the, all these indices are transforming in the same way. Otherwise, it will be totally different. I mean, if you have a uh, SU3 times SU2, let's say. Let's suppose I have a, a group uh, which is SU3 times SU2, okay? which is what we'll see in particle physics. Right? Uh, I mean, the course we'll see. For example, the quarks, quarks uh, carry an SU3 quantum number because they, they have this color, SU3 color gauge group. Huh? So they ca carry SU3 quantum number as well as SU2 quantum number. So in that case, you represent the indices by two, two different types of indices. So I and say alpha. Hmm? So I goes from 1, 2, 3. So it's a triplet. I mean, the quark is, it transforms as the, in the fundamental representation of SU3. Hmm? And, and it's also a doublet of SU2. Hmm? So this, will, this alpha index goes from 1, 2. So I goes from 1, 2, 3. And alpha goes from 1. And the, the, the way it will act is, I mean, if I, the, so how this, this Lie, the, say the Lie algebra, or just say the group, how does the group act on it? It will be, so this is a direct product group. It's a direct product group. So an element of this group will be uh, labeled by, let's say, uh, give some two symbols, G and H, let's say. So G belongs to SU3 and H belongs to SU2. So these are two different groups. So this is a three by three matrix. This is H uh, two by two matrix in the fundamental representation. Okay. And how this will transform under this GH is simply it goes to GIJ uh, H alpha beta uh, Q J beta. So I mean the H acts only on this index, G acts only on that index. But in this there is no question of symmetrization. I mean you know, they are distinct indices. How the question of symmetrization appears only when uh, the indices are of the same type. So that's why, I mean, so when we say tensor, we really mean, this can also be called a tensor, but I mean, it's in a trivial sense, no? But, but here, uh, in other words, this is an irreducible representation of this group. Okay? This is an irreducible representation. But this guy, if the all the indices were the same, they are not, that's not a reducible representation. Okay, so, uh, yeah, what was I saying? So, I mean, so this will act, so each of these, so it will be, ah, sorry, this was at the level of group. Now, if you talk about the Lie algebra, so Lie algebra will be direct sum of the Lie algebras of these two, the Lie algebras, right? It will be whatever I think you were calling this small s plus, SU2. Okay. And let's suppose I have an element here x and an element here y in the Lie algebra. Then x will act, so x will act, um, uh, so x will act on uh, the, just the index um, uh, i, j, r I mean, in, the, in the appropriate representation uh, uh, of q, i, alpha, uh, q, j, alpha. And it will not touch the second index at all, right? Because this SU3. It doesn't act on the second index. Uh, whereas the y, which is an SU2, will act only in the second index. So y alpha beta, uh, uh, I mean, this will be the different representation. I mean, this is a different representation. Uh, Q, uh, j beta. So they're separate, separate action, completely separate action. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, actually, in the standard model, you have not only this, but you have also U1. But U1 is the trivial. I mean, U1 just tells you that U1 uh, quantum number is simply the charge of this. Okay. So, so that is that just goes along. I mean, it doesn't do anything. What do you mean uh, signetization? You said the signetization. there is no signetization. Yeah, there is no, because these are two different indices. I mean, what, uh, you know, but we talked about totally symmetric, totally anti-symmetric uh, tensors, no? Okay, I mean, uh, so let's say, I think we discussed this, Tij. Let's say, take the two, rank two tensor. Now, this I can split into totally, into symmetric, which means half Tij plus Tji. Okay, and the anti-symmetric combination, uh, which is I use a square bracket for that, and this is normal bracket, which is half Tij minus Tji. These two combinations, and we showed that. Uh, I mean, if you if you do if you make a, a transformation, uh, I mean, by, so with some Lie algebra or group elements, then this combination uh, goes back to itself. It doesn't mix. These two things don't mix. That is why, that is the way we showed that the original tensor itself is a reducible representation, right? Whereas these guys were irreducible. So when you, yeah, when you, when we applied this, so if I look at x, uh, x action on this tij, so how will it act? I, say i prime, t i prime j, uh, let me go to k here, k, plus x, so t i j, will go to plus x uh, j k t i k. Right? I mean, uh, just to repeat, because I think that was done a few days back. Yeah? Maybe last week we did that, so probably you might have forgotten. So just to uh, remind you this. So now if I, if I look at now this combination, now similarly let's do for t j i. t j i, what will it be? It will go to just uh, exchange i and j. So you get x j k t k i plus x i k t j k, right? Now I take the combinations, either, either plus combination or minus combination. So if I take t i j plus or minus t j i, then what's going to happen? So I'll have this plus or minus that, right? Now let's collect all the terms which comes with the say x i k. So we have x i k, that will come here to the t k j, and here it will come with a plus or minus because I am multiplying this whole thing by plus or minus tjk. Right? And similarly, xjk, you collect all the terms of xjk. From here you get tik plus minus, from here you get tki. So you see it's the same combination. If you started with a plus, the combination which enters here is only plus. Plus, or if you started with the minus, only combination that appears is minus. So that means, it, uh, I mean, if I apply the transformation here, it will never go there. It will stay within this space, hmm? and similarly vice vice versa. So this proves that uh, this original representation was reducible, and we have taken into irreducible components of that. I mean, it is not doesn't prove this irreducible yet. Huh? I mean, it might have been that there is something smaller than that. All it says is that this is an invariant, invariant space. This is an invariant space, right? But uh, okay. it turns out that, that it's just, these are irreducible representations. Okay. For SU2 as well as uh, SU3, and so on. this is irreducible representation. Um, uh, but we also discussed a little bit about the high, uh, I mean, the young, young Pablo is related to this. That's why I'm talking about it. Uh, so uh, if, if you, uh, you can also talk about uh, the mixed guys, I mean, so higher rank, so higher rank, this is at rank 3, for example. No? This is rank 2. There are only two, two indices here. Rank 2 tensor, rank 3 tensor. In this case, there are many, many possibilities, and we've discussed that a little bit. The, uh, one was a total, totally anti-symmetric, totally symmetrized. No? So make all the permutations. There will be how many terms? Six terms will be there. Just add them, right? And divide by six. Just to, I mean, that doesn't matter. Uh, normalization. Then you can have a situation where uh, 
totally anti-symmetric, I, J, K, P, I, J, K, totally anti-symmetric, hmm? that's one possibility. But now you can have more complicated things, which I think I denoted by T, I, J, K, uh, and T, uh, which, which was defined, and now I don't remember the expressions. Let's see. Yeah, T, I, J, K was defined, T, I, J, K was defined as, uh, so this was T, I, J, K which was defined uh, in terms of the permutation groups. So 1 minus G, 1, 3, G, 1, 3, uh, and times 1 plus G, 1, 2, acting on the T, I, J, K. So what is this a permutation? This, this uh, G13 exchanges the first and third index. Uh, G12 exchanges the first and second index. And uh, so you ch take that combination. And there are some normalizations here. Okay. And then the, similarly, you could do TIKG. Uh, TIKG. Uh, so this was uh, again one third, uh, but to exchange. So 1 minus G12 and 1 plus G. And these, these things became uh, different uh, irreducible representations. I mean, one, exactly like what we did here. If you go through the na analysis here, and uh, do the transformation, you'll see that if, you, if x acts on this, if the Lie algebra acts on this, you get back a state here. You don't mix with other things. And similarly, each, for each one of them, you can show. It requires. Uh, basically, the, it follows because uh, this, I mean, the. You, you can just, uh, when you apply these permutations, uh, you, you see that you can just pull this out of the x actions. Okay. So that what results, what you get back at the end, again satisfies the same projections. These are like projections, right? You're, you're projecting. So when you say 1 minus g12, it's like you're projecting on uh, some combination. Um, now, this same thing, this, this uh, the, so young tableau. Uh, it's basically like this. I mean, so let's let's uh, focus on this rank three, okay. or even rank two. So the way you do it is that um, so rank two, rank two means that you you have uh, some you construct a table uh, which has just two boxes. Okay. Uh, so for each each index here, there's one box. So I, I have I started with two boxes here. Okay. At the moment, I just keep them separately. Each box represents one index. Okay. I mean, you can uh, later on you can fill in these indices here. Okay. But for the moment, let's just ignore that. Just I just one uh, box for each index. Okay. Okay. So, for example, if I had only one index, only one index, that is just this one box. Hmm. But that is a fundamental representation. So this box really represents a fundamental representation. Okay. So this box uh, is a note is a uh, is a uh, I mean denotes denotes fundamental representation. Fundamental of anything, S U two, S U three, S U N, anything. Right? Okay. So I take this. Okay. Now if I take uh, T I J, then I have two boxes. Uh, essentially, like I'm taking the tensor product of two, two fundamental representations. Right? That's what it means, right? Mm -hmm. That is tensor product of two fundamental representations. Okay. Now, uh, uh, so, uh, so, so how, how do we denote these two combinations in this language? Huh? And that's uh, the, I'm just telling you what the language there, the young tableau language. Huh? Uh, but it's just a, a direct translation of this. So instead of writing all these combinations so, and so on. You just denote like this. If I put these two boxes together, that is the same as total symmetrization. Uh, total, there are only two indices to symmetrize. So you, you get symmetrization, symmetric combination. So sim, uh, symmetrization, totally symmetric. And if you put the two boxes in the vertical, vertically you arrange it like this here, uh, 
uh, then that is anti-Semitic, totally anti-Semitic. That's all. With the two, uh, two rank two, this is only two possibilities. Huh? Totally symmetric and uh, anti-symmetric. So this one, um, you remember, okay, for, S, for, for SU2, SU2 what happened? Uh, this was, uh, uh, so uh, fundamental, spin half, with spin half. I know it, there should be a spin one and spin zero, right? Um, so this is the spin one. The symmetric part, okay, and spin zero. This is spin zero because uh, uh, you see, uh, I mean, this is totally anti-symmetric. Okay, there, there is only one. I mean, with the rank two, there is only one anti-symmetric tensor like that, mm -hmm. epsilon ij, right? Okay, SU two. I mean, SU two. Uh, what I'm saying is that SU two. This each of these index goes from one to, right? And I want to write down something which is anti-symmetric in i and j. But each of them takes value only one and two, nothing else. Okay. So the, the there's a unique anti-centric tensor epsilon ij, okay. and that's a, that's a SU two singlet. Okay, nothing happens to that. I mean, I say epsilon ij k is preserved by SU two. So this uh, so therefore this one, uh, this, yeah, this is just a singlet okay. in SU two, in SU two, not in SU three. Now let's look at, so this was SU2 discussion, so let me just write it here. So these two diagrams, in SU2, this diagram is just a symmetric, combi a symmetric combination of two spin halves, right? And that will be spin one. Okay. You see that, I mean, because if I look at the, uh, how many possible combinations you can make, it will be T11, T22, I mean, i and j, remember, take value only 1 and 2, right? And the other, or the only other possibilities, t12, t21, plus t21, because it's a symmetry. So there are three states here. That's exactly the dimension of spin, spin 1. Okay. Or, or perhaps, I, so suppose I, this, the, one, the 1 indicates uh, uh, the plus half eigenstate of the sigma 3, I mean half sigma 3, okay? And uh, the index 2 denotes, because I have two states, right? The 1 and 2 are telling you the two states. So, but I know that one state carries plus half, other state carries minus half, right? So if you look at 1, 1, then each of these guys carries plus half, plus half. So the total J3 quantum number is plus 1, okay? Here, both are minus half, minus half. So total J3 quantum number is, here is plus one, here is minus one, and here it is zero. But that's exactly the content of the spin one representation, right? Spin one, M quantum number goes from plus one, zero, and minus one, that's it. Okay. On the other hand, anti-symmetric guy will be simply T12, this guy will be T12 minus T21. Okay. And here, the J3 quantum number is zero. Because 1 and 2, this plus half, that's minus half, j3 quantum number is 0. And here again, I've used this, the, this thing which I kept repeating yesterday, and that in the tensor products, the, uh, the eigenvalues are additive. You add them up. No? So that is why I'm just adding up this eigenvalues. And uh, this is it, because uh, this doesn't mix under SU2 transformation, this doesn't mix with other guys. So this is the highest weight state, okay? So and highest weight is, uh, state is zero with a zero spin. Right? So that's that's how you see in SU two. If you take half times half, you get spin one and spin zero. Okay? This is the Jan Tableau way of looking at it. Hmm? Yeah. Uh, are we always saying that when we tensor product two uh, fundamental representations, uh, we always end up with two uh, other representations? The fundamental times fundamental. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. For, for any dimension. For any dimension. Yes. And for any SUI. That's right. Yeah. No, not any dimension. I don't know about any. No, no. Uh, yeah. No, sorry. Even for any dimension. Yeah. Because these are only two possibilities. Symmetric and It will not be singlet. 
This will not be singlet if you take some other representation, right? Yes, but an anti-symmetric and symmetric part always there is, right? If, for example, uh, take a J representation of SU2 yes. and look at the J cross J, it splits up into two, one is symmetric, one is anti-symmetric. Yeah, but they are further reducible, that's the point. Uh -huh. At least... Yeah, yeah that, that certainly is there, but uh, they are... this. using this? Yeah, that's right. Because spin j with spin j, we know actually it starts from 2j all the way up to 0, right? So in that case, what happens is this individually, these guys are not uh, irreducible. They are further irre irreducible. Because we can uh, write j as uh, 2 cross 2 cross 2 many yeah, cross 2, yeah. so they can also yeah. contribute. Exactly. Uh, yeah, so the, uh, I mean, in this kind of this symmetry matrix, etc., work if you are looking at the fundamental representations, then 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 there is a one-to-one -one corres uh, correspondence between the irreducible representations that you get and the permutation group, the permutation. Group. Otherwise, it's more, more much more complicated. Okay. With the young tableau, you can also deal with that. I mean, how you take the tensor products of not fundamental but different representations. There are rules for that. So there are some basic recipes are for that. Uh, Okay, uh, so now let's look at the SU3, uh, the same thing, second rank tensor. Let's look at SU3. Mm -hmm. So, uh, let's so the, um, uh, so, uh, so the, for SU3, uh, you have, uh, uh, so you, you have started with the 3 times 3, right? The totally symmetric, uh, this the totally symmetric second rank will have how many uh, possibilities? You have three times uh, three plus one four divided by two, right? That many states will, that many possibilities will be there. Second rank symmetric tensor. How many components are there, right? Half times three plus uh, three times uh, plus times three plus one, which is four. It is six. And indeed, we saw a six-dimensional representation, right? Now if you take the, then of course there's other possibility, anti-symmetric. Uh, in this case you have half 3 times 3 minus 1, which is 3. Actually it is a complex conjugate representation, 3 bar. Okay. Because 3, uh, what we called 3 was denoted by just this box. Okay. And here what, here it's two boxes, it's not exactly the same, it's not, it's a complex conjugate representation. Dimension is the same, okay. but it's a complex conjugate representation. So this is how uh, you see that, uh, that the tensor product of this fits into this in the young tableau language, okay? which we saw before explicitly. Um, now let's take the third rank tensor. Suppose I look at the third rank tensor. This is even more interesting now. Uh, so, so look at the IJK. Uh, so in SU for the I mean, so we have this this we have three boxes. So we have three boxes now, right? For each each of these index. So he said, we are, we are looking at the tensor products like this. Three, three boxes. Each box, the single box is always the fundamental representation of that, of the group that you're looking at, the or the algebra you're looking at. Huh? That's what it means. For SU2, it's a doublet. For SU3, it's a tri uh, fundament, triplet. Fundamental representation is three-dimensional. No? SU4, it will be four-dimensional representation, and so on. So that's the fundamental. So you take uh, this TIJK. So if I take the totally symmetric guy, uh, that uh, will have how many components? Uh, uh, so I take the SU2. First, take the example of SU2. Okay. Uh, this, uh, okay. Uh, uh, so first, let's just draw the diagram. First, let, look, let's look at all the diagrams. You have this diagram. You have a, a diagram where uh, you can take totally anti-symmetric. So remember, the, not, the convention is that every time I have horizontal boxes, this is totally symmetrization. Every time I go in the vertical direction, this is total anti-symmetrization. But then I can have also mixed varieties. The one which I, uh, I erase that part. So remember this uh, T, I, J, K, which was uh, this funny products of the projection operators. So, so this, uh, then those are denoted like this. You have this guy here. Okay, so the rule is, that uh, so you have to organize this thing in some way. You say that uh, in a in a young in a in this young tableau, what I will do is I will have a bunch of, uh, I mean, rows and columns. 
Okay. So I have, uh, I mean, some boxes in the first row, some boxes in the second row, and so on and so forth. Okay. Uh, but you can always permute these things, right? I mean, so you can arrange in such a way that the number of boxes is always uh, not, not increasing, right? So suppose in this row you had more boxes than that, just exchange it. So you, not to overcount you know, the possibilities. So you always make this rule that the number of boxes in this row should be greater than or equal to this row, this should be greater than or equal to that, and so on. So in a non-ascending order. As you go down, and the same thing you do for the columns. You start always from the first column. I mean, the, from the left, you put all the rows start from the same line. Okay. So if I have a third column, also states starts from there. But then again, I do the same thing. The number of columns doesn't increase as you go this way. This is not to overcount. You, you just want to count once a particular type of symmetrization or anti-symmetrization, okay. not to overcount. So. If now I have three boxes, so I arrange all possible ways you can do it. So at the moment, uh, so I took three in the one row. Now I, I took three in one column. This is perfectly okay. Now I can take two in the first row and one in the second column. That's all, right? I mean, the other thing is not allowed because not to overcount unnecessarily, right? I mean, it's, uh, okay. Uh, but uh, then, um, yeah. Um, yeah, and then you see you can uh, do the following thing. And so the, how these two things appear? So now if I think put this indices here, i, j, k, this just means that uh, this is totally anti-symmetrized here. Right? Here I put i, j, k, then this is totally uh, uh, anti-symmetrized. Okay. Now what I do is I put here i, say j, k, but I can do in two different ways. Though that is why we got these two guys, t, i, k, j. Yeah. Uh, this is because, I mean, uh, now I'm saying that these two are symmetrized, but those two are anti-symmetrized. At the same time. At the same time. I mean, the, the precise thing which we wrote down, that particular combination. So there will be several terms. I mean, if you write down how this, uh, this was, I think, 1 minus g, 1, 3, uh, 1 plus g1, 2, etc. right? That combination. This is just a notation. That, that's, that's how you put it there, right? You cannot write this with the parenthesis uh, notation, right? No, no, it's uh, not completely. Uh, actually, we saw that when we expanded this, when we expanded this, there was always one antisymmetric pair, right? So that antisymmetric pair will appear down here. So that's... Uh, okay. And uh, the, uh, so there are two ways of doing it. That's what I'm basically emphasizing here. I, J, K. So you do that. Okay, I mean, basically it's not, uh, not even I, J, K. You just put the one, two, three. The first position, second position, third position. And so one, two, three. One, two, three. Now I'm not sure uh, in the standard literature whether it's supposed to be the descending order or ascending order, I don't remember. <laughs> but it doesn't matter. You choose some order and you be consistent with that. That's all. Uh, so here now I put here one. Uh, so the rule is again, it should be always ascending order. Say, it, I think the, normally people call it descending order. But anyway, since I wrote this, so one. Uh, then I can put here two and three, and here one, three and two. Both are satisfying this ordering requirement. I think there's no other way you can distribute this. Because, I mean, the one cannot go into any of these places. Because if one goes to any one of these places, here it will be two or three, right? But that will not be in the ascending order. So in this ascending order, so this is the way you count. Okay. Uh, this is the way you count. And actually, uh, yeah, this is, in fact, uh, if you, I mean, I don't think that you, you have studied the permutation group very much, right, I mean, in the undergraduate. Uh, that's why I didn't want to go into that, because this is very closely related to the permutation groups yeah, and its representations. Okay. So here, if we look at the, this is a S3, this group is S3, because they have three, rank three, so you have a, a permutation group S3, which has uh, six elements, right, factorial three. 
elements. Mm -hmm. So that is six elements. And the way it works out is that you get uh, the six. So if I, if I look at the six dimensional representation uh, or the permutation group, that six dimensional representation uh, splits into uh, one, uh, two singlets. These are the two singlets. Okay. Two singlets. And uh, each one of them is a doublet of the permutation group. So that is how it works out. So this six splits into one, one, plus one, but uh, plus two copies of doublets. And this is the doublet here. But I mean, I don't want to go because I don't think you have, you have studied this permutation group. That's a totally different techniques. I mean, it's group theory, but it's totally different techniques. Right, right. Mm -hmm. so single and double, there's nothing to do with the... Uh, no, no, no. Yeah. This has nothing to do with the Lie algebra. The, here I'm just discussing the permutation group. The Lie algebra comes when you identify the, each of these box with a fundamental representation. That the index which goes in there is one coming from the fundamental representation of the Lie algebra. Here this uh, discussion is purely uh, the permutation group, irrespective of Lie algebra and so on. Uh, so the, the, it splits into, so this is a high, very complicated group, I mean it's a non-invariant group, yeah? uh, discrete group, there are only six elements, it's not a continuous group, hmm? and uh, one can classify all the representations. Uh, so the tableau actually originated from that, I mean actually by start, try, looking at the per, uh, representation of the permutation group. Uh, then okay, one, uh, one could use uh, to, for any type of tensor, but then, in particular, then they, you focus in the, on this when these indices are going over the fundamental representation of some Lie algebra. Okay. But, uh, okay. Uh, so, yeah. N now, uh, so so how so this is for SU two. Now let's uh, go back to SU two rank three. Uh, this will correspond to. Uh, this will correspond to the because this is symmetrization. So remember, so this will always contain a T111, right? The, which will be the highest weight, plus half, plus half, plus half, so plus three half. So this will correspond to spin three half representations. So this will be spin three half. Uh, this doesn't exist because it is I, the I, J, K, I mean, this is a third rank anti-symmetric tensor. But uh, in a SU2 case, uh, I mean, so this will be non-zero only if all these three indices were different. But in a C2 case, each of these guys are taking value only one or two, nothing else, right? So this is not possible. This doesn't exist in SU2. And in here, uh, there is no, I mean, uh, you see that uh, this, uh, this object, you can just forget about it because this, uh, this is already proportional to epsilon ij. So that has already become singlet. The moment in SU2, the, what happens is that the moment any two indices are anti-symmetric, you just throw that out because that's a singlet. Okay. So then you are left with just one. I mean, there are not these two copies. There's one, one uh, fundamental, which is spin half. That is how uh, half times half times, no, sorry, half plus half, sorry. There's also this. You remove that also. You just throw away this anti-symmetric guy, anti-symmetric guy, because that doesn't do anything. Okay. Uh, and so you're left with two fundamentals and one spin three half. Right? And we can check if it is the case. So you multiply half times half. Okay, sometimes I use the, for SU2, many times I use the J here. Huh? But, uh, you know, if you want to write this in terms of dimension, it will be two. No? But I write this half because we know that we have to add this uh, spins, no? Add or something, no? So that's why I'm writing like this. But please don't get confusion. This I keep interchanging. Yeah? Uh, okay. So I, I do that. So first I take this product. Then I get here 1 plus 0. Right? Spin 1 and spin 0. Now I multiply this by half. 1 with half gives me uh, 3 half and half. And 0 with half gives me half. So that's why we get 1 spin 3 half and 2, two spin halves. So that's how this is working. Now, if you look at uh, the same thing, third rank tensor, but with uh, uh, symmetric, uh, I mean, for SU3 case, so what's going to happen? Uh, so, in this one for SU3, 
you have this box, with the, the, the first one, the totally symmetric one. Uh, so the dimension we know is, uh, uh, so it will be uh, totally symmetric. So it's a 3 times 3 plus 1 times 3 plus 2, okay, divided by uh, factorial 3, right? right? They're totally symmetric. So you will find this is what, 3, uh, 3 4, 5, uh, and divided by 6. So that's 10. 10. Okay. So this is 10-dimensional representation of the SU3. Okay. okay. Then uh, you look at uh, this one, this this uh, box here. Uh, this is totally anti-symmetric, but of course, uh, because in SU3, this T, I, J, K, each of these indices are 1, 2, 3, right? Mm -hmm. That's all. The, uh, back, the maximum is a 3, 1, 2, or 3. And the third rank anti-symmetric tensor has to be proportional to epsilon i j k, right? So this is going to be single. There's unique, unique tensor which is uh, totally anti-symmetric. No? Uh, so this is dimension one, and we can indeed, indeed check. Uh, so anti-symmetric, so it is three, three minus one, three minus two, divided by factorial three, which is one. Right? That's that. And then we have these two representations of this type, because we have two of them, right? With a different ordering. There were two of this. Multiplicity was two here. So let's say two copies of this. Two copies of this. Now this is uh, nothing else but the, um, uh, sorry? Uh, this one is the joint representation. This is eight dimensional representation. This is a joint representation. Uh, and uh, um, I mean, one way to th think about this is the following. Uh, you remember, uh, we said in SU3, if you look at the second rank tensor, totally anti-symmetric, this was three bar, complex conjugate. Yeah? So now this diagram is like a taking tensor product of uh, three bar with a three, with a fundamental. Mm -hmm. And yesterday we saw. 3 bar times 3 gives you 8 plus 1, the adjoint plus a singlet. Hmm? So this is the, the so if, if I if I multiply this guy with that, uh, you see this already also telling us what is the rule, what, what is the rule for the young tableau to multiply representations. So what you do, you take this box and attach it either horizontally or vertically down. But in such a way that the, the uh, we have the rules of the Young Tableau, right? They should never be in, uh, increasing, the number of boxes should never be increasing going this way or that way, right? So if I have to put in a horizontal, there's only one possibility to put, and that is this one, right? I cannot put it here because that's not allowed. I mean, that's not uh, like overcounting, you don't allow that. And other possibility is, to put this vertically down, which is this here. This one is a eight-dimensional representation, and that's a singlet. So three bar times three goes to eight plus one. So that is a yeah. And it's more detailed, but why do we use two boxes for three bar? And two? Two uh, boxes for three bar and one box for three. Ah uh, no, because we we saw already that this had the same dimension, same dimension, but uh, dimension was the same. But it's clearly different from that. I mean, the fundamental was that. Okay. Uh, six plus three one. Huh? Uh, uh, this, uh, this, the fundamental is just a one box, right? Uh, then we said that okay, uh, if you take second rank tensor, we have two possibilities. We have totally symmetrized index thing, or and to totally anti symmetric. But are uh, six and three bar uh, irreducible in themselves? Yeah, yeah. Six and three. But plotting it like that. Uh, Maybe makes the implication that we can take two boxes and uh, put it on top of each other and create a three bar. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, so the, what what we wrote here. I mean, when we take this tensor product, it is just like uh, taking the tensor product. Of, yeah, in this, the same thing. I'm just writing this here. Now the basic procedure is you 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 take the say the second one and start attaching it to this guy to construct the irreducible representation. This is the procedure. The young tableau method to construct all the irreducible representations. Uh, 
every single one of box uh, combinations we draw is an irreducible. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. When it's reducible, you uh, you put it as a product. I mean, when it's sorry, reducible. When you say this times that, that of course is reducible representation. But once you attach the thing and it's one diagram, that is a irreducible diagram from the point of view of Lie algebra. Also, at the, from the point of view of the uh, symmetry group, permutation group. These are all irreducible representations of that. Okay, so here, uh, so this, this is a 6 and that is a 3 bar. So again, I'm using the same rule. I'm saying that take this, I, I want to take the tensor product and decompose into irreducible. Right? What I do, I take this box and start attaching to the first diagram in all possible ways that I can do, keeping the, always following the rules of, rule of uh, the young tableau. So in this case, I have only two possibilities. I can attach in the horizontally here or vertically there. And that gave you the 6 and 3 bar. Uh, in this case, uh, again, we have actually only, so this was, and okay, so going back to your question of why is 3 bar. Um, yeah, this is the, uh, I mean, okay, the, uh, the, uh, I think a quick way of saying this is the following. Uh, both of dimension of the one box and dimension of this box, uh, this these two vertical boxes is three, and we know in SU three there are only two representative irreducible representatives which are dimension three. One is what we call uh, the original fundamental representation, which was that, and the other one was the uh, the three bar, right? And indeed, we saw yesterday when we explicitly uh, took the tensor product of three with three. We found exactly a six-dimensional representation and a three-dimensional, but it was complex conjugate. You see, so that is that again fits it. With this one. So this is the. In general, if I give you a young tableau, uh, young, young diagram, and I ask what, so it's some representation, right? Some irreducible representation. Now, what is its complex conjugate representation? Now, suppose you ask this question, then the rule is very simple. Uh, sorry, I, I mean this is a bunch of rules. You know, I'm not going giving you any proofs. Huh? Uh, so if I take uh, S U N, okay. Uh, so S U N, uh, what I do, I just uh, so I have some bunch of some uh, some 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 young tableau with certain number of boxes here uh, and certain boxes in the vertical. I don't know some number of boxes. So let's say I have some diagram where. I have, let's say, A1 A boxes in the vertical here, A2 boxes in the vertical here. Of course, this is non in, not increasing, right? Because of the time. A1 is less than or, I mean, A2 is less than or equal to A1, A3 is less than or equal to A2, etc. So, this, so th these are the number of boxes in each, each vertical. Then, to get to the com complex conjugate, what you do is you just take, uh, you replace this by N, minus A1 boxes, okay, N minus A2 boxes, etc. in this in these vertical columns. And then of course that is not uh, going to ch uh, satisfy the correct ordering because you see if A1 is greater than A2, N minus A1 is less than N minus A2, correct? So you have to flip the ordering to bring it back, okay? That way you get the comp complex conjugate representations. But those diagrams which are invariant, they are self conjugate But any diagrams which are not invariant, they go to some other in a diagram, and then that is, uh, they, are, they are not self conjugate they are complex conjugate of each other. So if you apply that rule, indeed you see here for SU3, I started with a 1, then n is 3, so 3 minus 1 is 2, that is this. Notice that this is the, we said is the 8 dimensional representation. That's a joint representation. This is supposed to be self-conjugate, right? So let us see if this is true. So if I apply this for uh, just the adjoint, adjoint of the SU3, this is the adjoint, and n is now 3. So this is 2 and 1, right? Two boxes here and one box here. So n is 3, so the complex conjugation will give me 3 minus 2, which is 1, and then one, uh, 3 minus 1, which is 2, but this is not in the right order, so you flip that. So you flip that and you get back here. Same diagram. So it's a self-conjugate. Okay. 
Uh, so this is, these are the rules. Um, yeah, so in fact, you see now uh, the, the, the thing that I was asking you to check, try to check. So this tells you what is 3, this tells you what is 3 times 3 times 3. How you reduce, uh, how it decomposes if you reduce the representations. There is a 10 dimensional representation, there is a 1 dimensional representation, and there are two 8 dimensional representations. Okay? I think it adds up, correct? 8 times 2, 16, plus 10, 26, plus 127. That's the right dimension. 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, 27. So you get that. Yeah, yeah, there's only one eight dimension. Yeah, two copies. Yeah, uh, so uh, the, what is very in important is that this guy, singlet, you see that 3 times 3 times 3 contains a singlet. And that is why protons exist, you know. <laughs> you know, that, that <laughs> you know, <laughs> because uh, as you saw, uh, as we said before, uh, uh, quark, quarks, uh, say u, quarks are what u, d, s, and so on and so forth, right? So quarks are the fundamental representation of SU3 color group. Now I'm not talking about the flavor group. Huh? Not to, flavor is ex, uh, transforming these guys, u to d, d to s, and so on. The rotation between u, d, s. I mean, suppose I had just a single, single species of quark, just one species of quark, nothing else. Hmm? Uh, still, there will be SU3 color. So that means each of these quarks comes with some index i. Okay. i goes from 1 to 3. And uh, SU3 rotates this index i under the SU3, I mean the appropriate fundamental representation. Okay, that's the color. Now the color, uh, the, the, what is the physics is that uh, unlike the elect electromagnetism, electromagnetism you have charges, you know, plus charge and minus charge, but you can separate the plus charge and minus charge as far as you wish, right? You can have, a, there's no problem, you know. But these forces are so strong, much, much stronger than electromagnetic force, that they basically are confined. They, uh, a, 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 some, some uh, object which, which transforms non-trivially under SU3 simply cannot exist in the vacuum. I mean, if it does that, it, it, it's so unstable, it will just destroy the, all the vacuum nearby you know, and create something to, uh, to become colorless, become neutral under SU3. So that is the, uh, I mean, that is the picture. Essentially, the idea is that, uh, uh, so for example, let's say if you take a meson, which is the quark and anti-quark, huh? 3 and 3 bar. And 3 and 3 bar tensor product gives you 8 plus 1. Again, there's a 1 there. That 1 is crucial for the mesons to exist uh, because uh, the, this, the particles which exist are, should be color singlet, should be SU3 singlet, SU3 color. Not the flavor. Flavor is no problem. I'm talking about the color. Huh? So please don't confuse it with the discussion of the mesons that I was talking about, K, K mesons, pi mesons. That was discussion of flavor. Now I'm talking about the color. Hmm? Um, uh, yeah, unfortunately it's an accident that uh, the flavor and color group happen to be the same. You know? <laughs> So it gets a bit confusing. But now I'm specifically talking about the color group. So this is now the SU3 color group. This is the SU3 color. Color is just a word. Obviously, it has no color. But, uh, <laughs> yes, uh, but so, uh, so therefore, uh, for any stable particles to exist as bound states of these quarks, they better be singlets. And uh, this tells you that it is possible, of course, if you take quark, anti-quark, one transforms is 3, another transforms is 3 bar, there is, of course, a singlet. Huh? But what this is telling you that if you take just three quarks, all, triple, all the, I mean, in the 3 representation, not 3 bar, huh? you can still have a bound state because of this. Huh? And those are what are what the protons. And actually, proton is U, U, D. And neutron is U, D, D. Huh? Uh, so, these are bound states. So the existence of baryons uh, is because of this fact. Okay. 
Okay, now let's see what else I can say here. Yeah, um, I, I can also give you a dimension formula for the uh, this. Uh, you know, we you remember we discussed the. Yeah, I mean, I, I I'm not going to expand on because uh, it starts with me. This uh, this becomes a recipe. You know, I mean, so far I talked about the tensor products where I just uh, take. I mean, the, so far the examples we looked at are the tensor products of different representations. So we looked at uh, this with that. Right, and uh, for example, in this example, I looked at this with that. Okay, um, but uh, I mean, you, the, of course, you can consider very general situations. And for example, this with uh, 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 this, for example, you know, and so on. I mean, you can you can consider, but uh, the rules are much more complicated I mean, than what I have told you. There are some specific rules. So again, the thing is the same. You start. Um, but okay, uh, I mean, you start taking these boxes and start attaching to these boxes, boxes, these uh, ro rows and columns. Huh? But uh, there are some uh, definite rules because you see, uh, if I take here, I mean, let me just put here the index A and index B here. Okay. Uh, so first of all, now when I start attaching, so let's start attaching this 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 first row to that. Huh? So how many ways? I still don't do anything with the B, so I keep that B here. Right? Uh, but first, I'm going to attach these guys. Uh, in fact, even let's do step by step. So I, I take one of the A's, one of the A's, and I attach there. So I can attach in uh, two possible ways. I can put here A, right? Uh, so uh, this part, I'm, I'm writing this guy. I, I have to attach this one of this box to, to this, this diagram. So I have two possibilities. I can do that, or I can do that. Only two possibilities. So I have a, I've attached the a here, and I've attached an a there. Hmm? Now, uh, now I take the second a and put it. Start putting it there. Now again, I, I can take every diagram, every of this di every of this, uh, this each of this diagram. So first, let's look at that diagram. So I have first one possibility uh, here, a a. Okay. Uh, another possibility is uh, I put uh, A here and A there. But then there's another possibility, which is uh, naively, uh, there's another possibility, that I put A here and second A there. right? But this is not allowed, because this would be anti-symmetrization, whereas here originally, originally when I looked at this thing, this was symmetrized A. That cannot be. So you have to throw that out. So you see, these kinds of rules are there. Huh? Uh, so it starts becoming difficult when you do this. Uh, after having, so this you remove. Now you put, so what is left over now? Now there's only one B left over, right? This whole thing I have to multiply by B. Okay. And B, again, you start putting. But uh, there is a rule. Uh, now, it's not completely obvious why that rule is. It's not so easy to understand that. Uh, but, uh, okay, so at, at naively you can put B there. That's not allowed. Because there is, there, there, there is this rule that as you start counting the number of A's and number of B's, num <laughs> this looks almost like <laughs> making some concoction, cooking, you know. <laughs> <laughs> So, that at no point, as you start counting the number of B's and A's, going from here to there, then from here to there, from here to there, at no point the number of B's must exceed the number of A's. Okay, <laughs> there is rule. But again, this is something like, I mean, what the, the way I started cancelling some of the other diagrams, you know, the rules like this. So, for example, you, you, cannot put, you cannot put B there, but you can put B underneath here, or you can put B underneath here. That's okay. Right. Similarly, you cannot put B there, but you can put uh, B here, or you can put B there, and that's what that that, and then those will be the irreducible representations. So <laughs> there's some recipes, but uh, of course these are these all have. I mean, I think if I really understand the permutation group uh, properly, you know, this can be all understood. 
But uh, well, I mean, for our purposes, first of all, we are not going to go to very high dimensional representations. Uh, in physics, we are not going to do that. But I think, to me, the more important thing is the con conceptual. Right? And uh, conceptually, what we were discussing yesterday, that is what uh, is the actual thing behind it. Yeah? You have the different weights. Take a tensor product of these guys. The weights are additive. So you have a list of all possible weights. And you start removing the irreducible representations uh, one by one. No? Starting with the highest weight state, it will be some irreducible. You take that out. Look at the remaining guys. See what is the highest weight there. Huh? Remove that. So it's just, it's just like SU2, but we did SU2. And SU3, we did some examples. Hmm? Um, the, uh, the, let me just uh, write down the dimension formula. Which, uh, dimension formula in terms of the highest weight which is actually is equivalent also in terms of there's a dictionary between, between the highest weight language and this language um, but this so going back to the highest weight language for SU3 uh, we said that uh, this is basically characterized by two integers let's say P and Q uh, the P and Q were the uh, eigenvalues of H11, H, uh, what I was calling H1, sorry, H1 and H2, right? The two, the two uh, Cartan generators we took. And this H1 and H2 are not just arbitrary H1 and H2, right? Remember, this H1 was the J3 of 1 SU2, right? Uh, because we had this uh, X, um, I think alpha 1. X minus alpha 1 commutator was uh, 2 H1. And X alpha 2, uh, X minus alpha 2, this was 2 H2. Right? So it's important that these guys that I'm talking about are exactly, so these are, these are the guys which correspond to the simple root. Simple root, X alpha 1. Yesterday we were going to discuss simple root. So we have two SU, SU2 algebra, X alpha 1, generated by X alpha 1, X minus alpha 1, and H1 and alpha, x alpha 2, x minus alpha 2, and h2. And they correspond to simple groups. And uh, so here, what we're looking at are the J3 eigenvalues of these two SU2 subalgebras for the highest weight, right? So this, if you specify this number, and that defines to you one irreducible representation, right? So any, any non-negative integer, h1 and h2 could be any non-negative integer, and for each such choice, there will exist a unique irreducible representation. Okay. Now, uh, yeah, the dimensionality of this, uh, uh, we can check. Uh, I think, um, yeah, I think the dimensionality of this is H1 plus 1. I mean, look at this uh, a single SU2. Uh, for S, uh, just uh, this is for SU3, right? For SU2, we had uh, what we call J, but remember we normalized, multiplied by 2 to make it always integer, right? So what we had, in this notation, what we are calling is 2J. The, this, uh, let's say H1. H1 is 2J, okay? There's only one H1, there's only a one SU2 there, right? And the dimensionality of that was basically H1 plus 1. 2J plus 1 was a dimension of the representation, right? SU2. Now here I have two integers to specify the irreducible representation and the dimension is basically h1 plus 1 times h2 plus 1 times h1 plus h2 plus 2 uh, divided by something. I think maybe factorial 3. Uh, let's check. Or maybe factorial, maybe half. We can check it for some example then. I just don't remember. And it's not here. There is some Number here. Yesterday we tried to count down from 2, comma, 0, something like yeah. that. Uh, the chain ended somewhere, and uh, the chain itself is an agreeable super representation, right? Because the full thing was, yeah. The yes, the so is. the number of different yeah. Uh, yeah. two tuples give the, this number. Yeah, I mean, we can check it even for a fundamental representation. Fundamental representation is 1, 0, right? So if I just substitute 1 here and 0 there, what will I get? 2. So you'll get 2 here, 1 here, and here you get 3. So 2 times 3. 
but it, so it's a one half. Okay. One half there. And then this should work for everything. Let's see. Uh, for, uh, so for example, one one, I should get eight, right? That is a joint representation. Okay. So if I one one, so you get here two times two times four divided by two, just eight. Yeah. Or take two zero. Two zero should give me six. That was six dimensional representation. So three, uh, one, and four divided by two. So, so that's a dimension. So this is the generalization of that. If I SU2, you have just H1 plus one. Now it's uh, it is more complicated. Um, and there is generalization of that for SU3, SU4, etc. For SU4, clearly the rank is three, so I need three integers. H1, H2, H3 to specify. Okay. In that case, so for SU4, I mean this we I don't know. I don't think we will discuss SU4, etc. But uh, in the next week. But I don't think I'm going to talk about the representation. So since now we are talking about representation, let me just say. Uh, I mean, first of all, listen to the SU, SU n in general, right? SU n. What is the rank of SU n? The kata it will be. N, n minus one, right? Because it's a n by n matrices, but traceless, uh, Hermitian traceless matrices. So look at the diagonal matrices. So since it, there are n elements in the diagonal, but the trace condition removes one. So the Cartan subalgebra is n minus one dimensional. This is the Cartan subalgebra. Yeah. So just like for SU three, it was two. That is why we had only. We needed only uh, the root space was also two dimensional, right? Because roots were the dual of the karta, right? So the same dimensionality. So roots will also be now n minus one dimensional. Hmm? So so you need to specify n n minus one numbers. Okay. So it will be h one up to h n minus one, like that. So in particular for SU four, it will be uh, uh, it, it will be. Uh, and uh, for H1, H2, H3. Okay. For SU4. And uh, there is exactly like that formula. It just extends. Uh, so you see, in the SU2, we had just uh, one factor, right? There was only one. There was that. Now here we have the H1 plus 1, but also uh, the sum plus 2. And this, this pattern goes on. So you'll have H1 plus 1 h2 plus 1, h3 plus 1. That's one thing. Then you have h1 plus h2 plus 2 and h2 plus h3 plus 2. Not this and that. So the adjacent ones, only the adjacent ones. And there's a reason for that, that we will see that, that it's a, there's a chain which goes. Huh? So the chain, they're always adjacent. They talk to the adjacent ones, not, not to the faraway neighbor. Uh, and times uh, h1 plus h2 plus h3 plus 3 divided by factorial 3, factorial n minus 1 more generally. So, but it's a factorial 3. So, this is a formula for the SU4. And so, you can generalize it for ar arbitrary SU. Right? Like that. Mm. So, yeah. And, um, Is there, what else I want can talk? I mean, please ask questions then, uh, because I, I don't want to start the the general discussion today. Because anyway, there's not much time, so it's better to just try to clarify anything which was not completely understood from the last week's lecture and this week's uh, last week's lecture. So, to clarify this formula, given the highest weight, this gives the dimension of the representation. Of that representation. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, is there anything else? Is there that all possible representations for SU3 uh, can be given as two integer numbers, positive integer numbers? 
from yeah, it could be zero, but non negative. Yeah. Is it always expressible in terms of uh, natural products of three, 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 three? Yeah, you, you can uh, because uh, well, I mean, yeah, you can do that. Uh, so it would be, let's see. I mean, roughly, let's see what's happening. Uh, so you could think. Uh, so uh, so H one. Uh, so H one. Well, H one is one. Uh, H one. Remember, fundamental was one zero. Right? Three three dimensional representation was one zero in this notation, and three bar uh, was zero one. Uh, they are relative and you can make up anything. You can uh, do that. But on uh, the other hand, 3 bar itself, uh, it, so this guy is represented as one box, right? And uh, this guy is represented as uh, uh, this box here. Yeah. So uh, now, how? I mean, there is a way to write down the length tableau, h1, h2. Uh, I, I think I think it was just that. You take, uh, you take, uh, H2 of these guys, of this box, put them together. Okay. So H2 of them, and then put uh, H1 of these guys, of the single box. I think this is that representation. Um, the symmetric. Huh? Uh, uh, this is the young, young tableau uh, language. I mean, how uh, is a, so this is one language. This is by giving the highest weight. This labels a representation, irreducible representation. Young tableau has its own language to label an irreducible representation. And I was just trying to say what is the translation between the so two. So the uh, horizontal boxes are symmetric to each other. Yeah. Uh, so the weights are going to be added, right? Well, it's not so. I mean, we saw that the mixed guys are quite complicated. Uh, I mean, no. Uh, it's a, but I mean, if you take this, yeah, this, if you look at, if it's only one line, then we can just add all of them. Yeah. So, so in other words, first row is now H1 plus H2 hmm? boxes in the first row. In the second row, there are just H2 boxes. I think this is correct. I should check it. I think this is probably correct. I mean, this is certainly true for 1, 1. Right? For one one, you take this uh, uh, here. It's two. So this becomes uh, this guy becomes this plus that. So I think this is true. That's a way of representing. Yeah. That's a way of representing. If you want to use the, just the tensor tensors with the same type of indices, not. Uh, I mean, if you want to write it as a three bar and three, they are different indices, no? So, but if you want to put everything down, I mean, everything the same, same indices, same type of indices, then you have to use this. Yeah, I mean, uh, roughly speaking, uh, what is happening is that here you have uh, I1 up to I of H1 plus H2, right? This is a tensor we're talking about, but. There are these H2 antisymmetric pairs. Hmm? H2 antisymmetric pairs. But the, each time there is an antisymmetric pair, it's like a three bar. Hmm? It's, 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 it's a vertical box. This box. And this is three bar. So it's the same as like taking H2 three bars and H1 threes. And that is true. Now, one should check that. I mean, the easiest way to check is that. Uh, well, I mean, this formula of dimensions I gave you in the language of highest weight. Uh, and there is a similar formula for the young tableau. You know, arbitrary, if you have a, 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 some number of boxes in the first row, some number of boxes in the second row, etc. In, ter in terms of the number of boxes, again, there is a formula. And uh, uh, I think one can compare to just verify the two are the same or not. Anything else which I may have missed? Mm. Uh, let me. Okay, let me just go through this argument because yesterday I mentioned that, but I didn't. Uh, I didn't uh, prove to you. Let's uh, try to do this. Uh, you remember uh, this discussion about the degeneracy. Hmm? 
So you have two different ways of arriving. Start applying the uh, lowering operators. From the highest weight, you start from highest weight and start applying the lowering operators. And uh, it may happen that there are many different ways of arriving at the same point. Okay. Uh, then you have to decide whether uh, the different ways of arriving gives you the same state or different states. No? So let's take, uh, so suppose I, I started with uh, some uh, highest weight state. Let's take this, let's start from the highest weight state and just take the, the, the simplest, uh, uh, the, uh, a situation, a simplest situation where such a problem arises, which means there are only two ways, not uh, three or four or five ways, no? Uh, just take two ways of life. So let's say st I start from some highest weight and I apply x minus alpha 1 uh, on this, I arrive here, then I apply x minus alpha 2, remember the, the picture. This was alpha 1 and that is alpha 2. Huh? And this was alpha 3, etc. And these were the simple roots. So we are applying the lowering operators of corresponding to the simple roots. So x, I started from here, apply x minus alpha 1, I come here. Then I apply, so I go here, and I go here, x minus alpha 2. Okay? But equally well, I could have gone here, uh, x minus alpha 2 first. X, first, I go to x minus alpha 2, and then I come here x minus alpha 1. I will arrive here obviously the same, right? Because both amounts to subtracting alpha 1 and alpha 2 from this weight, right? So both will arrive there. But then the question is, is the st are the states independent or not? So let me call this state uh, W. Okay? W is some state, the highest weight, yeah, some, uh, some, some weight, some state. Uh, it, it has some eigenvalues right? with respect to h1 and h2. I don't know. Yeah, let me just call it W. So now, uh, so in this way I'm going, what am I going to get? First I apply x minus alpha 1, then I apply x minus alpha 2. Okay. More appropriately, I should always put r here, representation, right? So this is all we are discussing in some representation. So, but I'm dropping it. I hope it's understood all this. Right? I mean, strictly speaking, I should put that, that in this representation. Okay. And then, uh, so that's one way of arriving. So this, this, other way of arriving there, is first I apply x minus alpha 2 and then I apply x minus alpha 1. This is important because these orderings are not the same. I mean, they don't commute. The, so it's not guaranteed that these two states are the same. No? Uh, so if you look at this here, uh, so question is, is it, under what condition this could be? Um, this could be, yeah. so uh, this could be, so suppose they are, uh, I want to check whether they are linearly independent or not. Then that's what I want to say. So what is the question of linear independence? That means if I take a linear combination of them, a, a times this plus b times that, and set this equal to 0, if they are linearly independent, the only solution is a equal to b equal to 0. Right? Whereas if you can find a solution to this equation where a and b both are not equal to 0, okay, at least one of them is not 0, then they are not linearly independent. That is the basic, that's the definition of linear independence. So, so let's suppose, so I, I'm looking at this equation. I want to ask if the solution exists or not. So let's see, if, if it is true, if this is zero, uh, then uh, of course I can apply both R x alpha one and R x alpha two to this. Acting on a zero state will give you a zero state, right? So apply R, let's apply R x alpha one on this state, let's call this state some psi. Psi is the state, the left hand side. So we want to check whether psi is zero. Is it possible to take psi to be zero or not? Right? So we uh, try to arrive by some contradiction. Right? So suppose psi is zero. Okay? Then if I apply this guy on psi, this is going to be zero. Right? On the other hand, I directly do the calculation. Since I have the expressions for the state, I apply Rx alpha 1 there. Okay? Now, uh, the, as, as usual, when you apply something like this, raising operator, what you do? You start pushing it to the right. Huh? Because when it arrives here, it gives you zero, it's the highest weight. Is the highest weight state is by definition, is annihilated by alpha 1, x alpha 1, and x alpha 2. Right? So, so its strategy is to start pushing it through. Hmm? Now, 
alpha r x alpha 1 commutes with r x minus alpha 2. This will be already saw. Uh, if you look at this picture, uh, maybe I should run it here. Uh, so uh, if I draw this picture a bit more clearly, it's alpha 1, alpha 2, uh, alpha 3, and then here is minus alpha 1, uh, minus alpha 3, and minus alpha 2. Okay. So uh, when I try to push this Rx alpha 1 through Rx minus alpha 2, I have a commutator. I'll get a commutator, right? But the commutator between this and that vanishes because you see, if you, the commutator will have a weight which will be, I mean, the root which will be adding these two. But when you add these two, this vector you'll get, it doesn't exist. Okay? So this commutator vanishes. So I can push this. So I can push this Rx alpha 1 through that without, uh, free, free of cost. Okay? And then now I have to do the, uh, I have to push this again in there. But that is simply 2H alpha 1. 2H1, 2H1. So you get 2H1 acting on W. Okay. In fact, let me just put explicitly. So W1 and W2 are the eigenvalues with respect to H1 and H2. Okay. So when I apply 2H1 on that, uh, I will get give you. I will get you. I mean, I, I will get um, uh, two, 2 W1, right? So I will get. So the first state gives me a. A is the number in front. This is still there, Rx minus alpha 2 times 2w1 two uh, acting on the this state, w1 minus 2 state. Second state, if I look at that now, uh, first I, it, it already encounters, the Rx alpha 1 already encounters Rx minus alpha 1. This commutator is not 0, which gives me 2h alpha 1, but h, h1, but h1 now measures the eigenvalue of this thing. Okay. But this thing will be eigenvalues are additive. It will be the eigenvalue of this and the eigenvalues of this root. Alpha 2, alpha 2 had, do you remember what it was, alpha 2? I mean, in this, uh, this was 2 minus 1, right? And uh, this was minus 1, right? The H1 and H2 eigenvalues, because minus 1 and 2. So, so when I push this Rx alpha 1 through that, I'm going to get 2 times uh, uh, H1. But H, H1 will be will measure this and the, and the eigenvalue of that, alpha 2. So Rx alpha 2, Rx minus alpha 2 here, this is this is that. This will be plus 1, 2, right? Plus 1 minus 2. Now, they'll be exactly the opposite. So, uh, uh, so I will get uh, plus two, yeah, two, two times one plus w, uh, w one, right? I mean, so when it acts, you get two h one, okay, h one acting on this, but this has eigenvalue one plus w one, right? From that, uh, if I'm not making a mistake, I think this is plus one minus two. So this is h1 eigenvalue. So it will be 1 plus w1. Um, yeah. Uh, times, of course, rx minus alpha 2. Acting on this thing, w1, w2. Okay. So that is the commutator. But now, uh, the co after commutator, you have pushed the, this guy rx alpha 1 here. But then this commutes. So you can push it all the way there. And it annihilates it because highest weight. So that's it. So if this is zero, then we are saying that this combination, I mean, so this implies that A, I mean, 2w1a uh, plus 2w1 plus 1b is equal to zero because this state, this state is not zero. Right? I mean, if that state was zero, then the question never arose. I mean, if that was the, that was this state, if this state did not exist, then there was no issue of two roots. They wouldn't even have this question, right? So I'm assuming that these two are not zero, these two states. So that is one condition. 
Similarly, now you can ask the same question with the other guy. You apply Rx my alpha 2 on the psi. And this is equal to 0. Right? That will give me a just symmetry. Just uh, you exchange, you exchange A with B and W1 with W2. Right? So you get here 2 W2 B plus uh, 2 W2 plus 1 A. Why W2? Because we are applying the Rx alpha 2. Alpha 2 measures the H2. H2 is the way eigenvalues W2. That's one thing. And uh, it's completely, I mean, this is symmetric, right? I mean, the role of alpha 1 and alpha 2 is this exchange. Uh, so A and B get exchanged in the formula. You can just check it. But that's, that's the answer. So you get these two equations. And uh, the question now is that, is it the, the only is the only solution uh, uh, what we call uh, uh, a and b equal to zero? That's the question. Right. So this uh, you can see. I mean, for the for a non-trivial solution to exist, this is a linear equation, two unknowns, a and b. Right. You can write as a matrix equation. Okay, two you can forget. Two is an overall factor. So w one, w one plus one, and w. 2 plus 1, W2, okay. AB. So we are asking, uh, this is a linear homogeneous equation, is there some solution? The only way, non-trivial solution, apart from just a 0, 0, of course, is a solution, right? This is equal to 0, 0. So the 0, 0 is, of course, a solution. But the question is, is there any non-trivial solution? So that means determinant should be equal to 0. But that uh, gives you, uh, what is the W1, W2, minus w1 w2 minus w1 minus w2 plus 1 equal to 0. That means uh, w1 plus w2 equal to 1. So if w1 plus w2 is not equal to 1, minus 1. Oh, minus one. No, I think I have made a mistake. Somewhere in the sign, I think uh, I must have made a mistake. The sign. No, I think. Oh, maybe not. Maybe not. Okay, this minus one. You say minus one. Yeah, that is minus one. Uh, so of course this will not be satisfied, right? Uh, so that means. Uh, a and B are zero. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so therefore, uh, they are. There is no. They are linearly independent. I mean, the only solution to this equation is A and B equal to zero. So they are linearly independent. So that is how what we saw here. But I mean, this uh, no, this cannot be. I think I mis mistaken made some mistake in the sign. I think it's showing plus. No, what is the matter here? It should have been plus. In other words, it should have been W1 minus 1. I should repeat that again. But I think there should be a solution. Because indeed, you could. Uh, this should be true, right? I mean, after all. Or maybe not. Maybe not. I'm not sure. Uh, see. Um, so for example, let's see if I start with the, the yeah, this root diagram. Uh, so if I started with the alpha 3, this is the highest weight. Mm -hmm. You remember, we have, I asked you to check that uh, if you take this highest weight, I'm going to get the adjoint representation. Right? So there are two ways of arriving here. Uh, here, here, and here, here. Mm -hmm. right? And the question is whether are they two independent states or the same state? And what this is telling you is that this argument is telling you that it is uh, mm -hmm. they are linearly independent states, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. No solution. Uh, yeah, I think that is true. So you will generically get that huh? uh, two, but this is true. But there are some special cases where. 
I mean, the more interesting thing would be, for example, if you look at that, that will require a lot of work. Uh, so, for example, you go here, you go here, but now again, to come here, there are two possibilities, this way or this way. Right. A priori, you would say there are two possible states, because here there are already two possible states. And uh, each of these two states, I apply, I should get two states, but it cannot be, there should be only one state. Right? Because here there I have one state, so this should be also one state. So maybe that's what you can try. You can try that. But that's a little bit more complicated because in order to do that, I need to look at um, x minus alpha 1, um, x minus alpha 2. I go here, then again x minus alpha 1 uh, to come here. That's one way. And another way is x minus alpha 1, uh, no, x minus alpha 2, and x minus alpha 1 x minus alpha 1. Okay. There are two ways of getting this state from the same guy. So uh, in, now I'm particularly looking at 1, 1 state. Huh? This is the 1, 1 weight. Looking at these two states. And you should be able to show that uh, these two states are not linearly independent. Try that. I mean, that uh, uh, just, just go exactly the same procedure. So you, you have to take them A and B and uh, look at is it possible solution? Try to do that. Uh, you should find that there, that there exists a linearly dependent combination. I mean, there exists a solution to this. Okay. Non, non trivial solution. Uh, try that. Okay. Because, I mean, if, if you don't find it, it will be a disaster. <laughs> because, because I know that here there is only x minus alpha 1, there is only one state in the joint representation. So if you find that they are linearly independent, we should just throw out SU3 completely. <laughs> no. no, it cannot, but then just uh, you know, try it out. Uh, this argumentation is only valid for algebraic representation, right? No, no, this is for any, any weight. Any weight W1, W2, so long as there are two ways of arriving there. You see, if I take the fundamental representation, which is uh, which is one zero, okay, the weight uh, this is already singlet of the second uh, the second SU two, so there is no, there are no two ways of arriving. There's only one way of arriving there. You see, so this weight was this here, okay. You apply uh, this is a singlet alpha alpha two is this direction, and this is perpendicular, right? And this was alpha one. So the only way was to go here, okay. The, the, this way, this way didn't exist. Okay. Then you come here. Uh, so, this guy. so to get here, there was only one way to go. Okay. So this issue didn't arise there. But um, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, six-dimensional representation will have similar problem. If you look at the six-dimensional representation, uh, which was the, which we looked at. Uh, which was two, two, uh, twice the fundamental, right? Yes. So this first time I apply here, this is a singlet, so it doesn't do. Uh, then I apply here, come here, and then okay, this guy I can apply here uh, in the in the alpha two direction. Yeah. So I will come somewhere here. This one I can apply here, and then this one I can apply there. Okay. So this was the picture. So to arrive here, there is only one way. Because I'm only allowing simple roots, uh, negative, I mean lowering of single, uh, simple roots. Because alpha three, as we saw, is not can be understood as a composite of alpha one and alpha two, you know, because of the commutator. So you don't need to worry about that at all. So you come here. This is only one way. So the multiplicity here should be one. No question about that. Also, to come here, there is only one way. So all these. So this has multiplicity one, the highest way. This has multiplicity one. This has one. This has one. But here, you see again, there are two ways of getting here. This way, okay, or this way. So this again should have multiplicity one, because otherwise it will have make no sense. Because this is a doublet. If this has one state, this cannot have two states. There's no way. So it must be one. So one, but one could check it explicitly by uh, by this kind of procedure.
and of course here, here. I mean, okay, if you prove that this is uh, already is only one state here, they're not two linear independent, only one state, then of course this will be also one state. I mean, this is just to get an experience with this to, to see how the multiplicities work. <coughs> we already proved there, I guess, because omega 1 plus omega 2 plus 1, this is the de determinant, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so this is no solution. Yeah, we saw there is no solution. Yeah. And omega 1 and omega 2 should be non negative integers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it means the smallest uh, value is 1. Yeah. So not 0. Uh, non, uh, w, yeah, I mean, yeah, correct. I mean, W1, W2, of course, that could be 0, but yeah. Uh, Zero or non possible. I mean, non negative. Yeah. Non -negative. Kind of, yeah. That's so right. the determinant is bigger or equal to one. Yeah. Not zero. That's right. That's right. So it means a and b should be zero. Exactly. Yeah. 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 yeah, we, yeah. The determinant was that. So if this is equal to zero, you imply that, and therefore it's not possible. Right. So keeping non negative w one w two is not positive. Uh, possible. But I mean, now you see coming here is not just two operators, right? Uh, one, two, three. So here we had just two operators here, uh, two two lowering operators. But now I put one more lowering operator here and here. So now it's a three lowering operator. So the calculation will become a few more steps because when you, you have to push it, push these guys through three steps. But fortunately, uh, I mean, it, uh, when you look at this equation, you need to worry only about the x minus alpha 1 because it commutes with that. So there's no problem. And when you take and vice versa for alpha 2. So there are too many terms. It, it is doable in one sheet of paper, I think. Yeah. <laughs> so you can even try. This is just a fun. Try it. Yeah, for the joint, of course, we needed, the, we, we knew, knew already there should be two states here, right? And uh, so it is not, I mean, this is a consistency check that uh, everything is, what we're doing is okay, you know, meaningful. If we had not found two different independent, then there would be some problem with that. Yeah, I mean, for example, you could try 2, 2. I mean, if you take this 2, 2, say, the 2, 2 weight. Then uh, the problem becomes even more uh, interesting. This is uh, this picture. Uh, picture will be something like this. I mean, so you have this hexagon, which is the root hexagon. These are the basic roots. Okay. This was one hexagon. Now remember, this was the highest weight, which was one one. And if you look at the highest, this was the highest weight of the joint. Yeah? But this is twice that. So now we're looking at this guy. I mean, the highest weight is now twice the alpha 3. This is 2 alpha 3. Mm -hmm. So now the picture will be much more complicated. You will have an inner hexagon, an outer hexagon, uh, outer hexagon, okay. uh, something like that. And um, so here you have a point, here you have a point, here, 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 here. Yeah, because the, every time you lower, you're going to lower by minus alpha one, you will come here, not there directly. This is two alpha one. Okay. Then of course there is this because you can apply, you can go here and then come here. Okay. So there is this, this, this. And now you see what's going to happen. And of course here, this is the zero zero weight. Now, <clears throat> this is the highest weight. There's only one way to go there. Only one way to go there. So multiplicity here is one, one, one. Okay. Here also, there's only one way to go, one. Because, but anyway, this is a spin one representation of that a, a, alpha one SU2. So all of the multiplicities is one. And similarly, here is one, 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 one. So the outer hexagon is all one. Now you go to here, here I have, go, I have two ways of arriving. Come here this way, or come here and this way. 
So the multiplicity, again, from this calculation shows that they should be linearly independent, these two states. So the multiplicity here is 2. And then, of course, this must be also 2 because this is the same. I mean, you see, uh, from this SU2 point of view, this whole thing uh, is a, there are one, uh, six states, six states. It's not an irreducible representation with respect to this SU2. So there is a one spin three half representation, so which has one, 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 one. But I also, on top of it, I have a spin half representation. So it's a spin three half plus spin half. Okay. And all of this inner, inner thing will have two multiplicities. And finally, when you come here, now there are many ways of arriving here. Okay. So actually, there are many ways. Let's see. One, two, three, four, like that here. Or one, two, three, four, like that. Or I can do one. I mean, you know, there are many ways. Actually, many ways. But you will find that there are only three states here. Only, only three linearly independent states. Okay. Despite the fact that there are so many different ways of arriving, you'll find that there are only three states. Well, actually, since you already know that here there are only two states, and here are only two states, so from here, when you come here, there are two possible states. From here, there are two possible states. So uh, naively, it looks like there are four different states, right? Uh, but there should be, they're not all linearly independent. Mm -hmm. There should be only three linearly independent states. And this guy, you can count, it's uh, 12. 12 in the outer ring. Uh, 6 times 2 in the inner ring and 3 in the uh, center. So that's a 27 dimensional representation of SU3. And so on. Keeps going. Okay, so then uh, I think from next week, then I will start the more gen general discussion, not SU2, SU3, generally algebra, the classification algebra. Yeah? Okay. Okay. See you then, have a nice weekend.